rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say it. Rejoice. Let your love be evident to all, for the Lord is near. Thanks be to God. What, what a beautiful epistle reading we had from Philippians. What a powerful gospel we had out in the wilderness with John the Baptist. And what a unique Old Testament reading we had for Advent 3 from the prophet, um, not widely known or read, uh, Zephaniah. Well, there's nothing better than to have a little girl run up to the door when daddy or mommy come home from work and she gives daddy a big hug, gives mom a big hug. Daddy's home, mommy's home, hooray. <laughs> to have a little girl or, or yeah, a little boy or three kids bombard a parent who's been gone on a trip when they return with just exuberant joy to see them. And it just melts the parent's heart just to get that kind of reception. It's not the reception you get every day. And then you don't want it to go too long. It's like, you know, quit clinging onto my skirt or, or let go of my leg, child. You know, go, go play. And then they're, they're content to play and, and do their other things. But mommy's home, daddy's home. You know, not uh, you again. Ugh, ugh. Well, Advent really has three parts, which I don't explain well enough every single year. Of course, Christmas, you get all that. Christ, Advent means coming. And then Judgment Day, you probably get that too. Christ is coming again. But I always miss the third one, the middle one. Maybe the most important one, as far as our souls are concerned, is Christ comes to the world today. So three comings, Christmas, today, and Judgment Day. That's what Advent's about. And when Christ comes, the prophet Zephaniah said that Jesus would be greeted like little girls running to the door. Jesus is here, I'm grabbing hold of him. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Little pet names for the church, the Christian church back then, today, and forevermore in glory. Daughter, little daughter of Zion, daughter of Jerusalem, Israel, sing. Why? Well, the Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm. The Lord has taken away your, your punishment and turned back your enemy. Well, that makes us think of Christ at Lent and Holy Week, Good Friday, dying on the cross to pay for our sins, all the sins of the people, taking away our punishment, our damnation that sinners deserve, and turning back our enemy. Well, who's your enemy this week? Think about that. I think still probably the devil. I, I am fairly certain your flesh and blood, and, and you still have, you know, doubts and unbelief and are mortal like the rest of us, so we have we have the sinful flesh. I'm fairly convinced that the world is not 
on bended knee, repenting before John the Baptizer's message this morning and really preparing for a fulfilling Christmas in a spiritual way. I hope they are. And death itself. Even at Christmas, you know, the poor funeral director has to work and mortuary guy or gal and cleric has to do funeral. People grieve. I've come to turn back the enemy. I will then, and then he said, then everybody's going to say, when, when I come in three ways, Christ, at Christmas, at the church of today, and then at my second coming, everyone is going to say, on that day they will say to Jerusalem, which is the church, do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. So as we rejoice in Christ coming to us in three ways, it's amazing that God says he will delight in us. He will quiet us. You think of little girls, you know, when they start crying, you know, at, you know, and what's wrong, you try to comfort them. <laughs> little boys, too. Although sometimes they stick out their bottom lip and, you know, they, they, they don't want to admit they're feeling sad. But God says, I will take great delight in you. I will quiet you with my love. Shh, shh. I will rejoice over you with singing. So who knew that Christmas was about God singing over us with joy? Like when your grandmama used to comfort you with a nursery song. I will comfort you with singing because we like singing carols. We, we love it and we should sing Christmas carols. But there, listen closely, there's another voice singing over us, forgiven, restored, eternal life, my people. It's Jesus singing over us unto eternal life. So what, you know, what, what a unique verse this is from the Bible that God sings about us. He says, don't fear, O church, and don't let your hands hang limp. What does that mean? Well, you know, you know, your limp hands. Uh, they don't do any work. Just kind of sit there, kind of get blown, tossed back and forth, kind of don't do any harm, but they sure don't do any good either. God never promised that Advent coming, first, second, and third, wouldn't take a ton of work. It takes a ton of work to prepare for Christmas to prepare for the ministry of today at Christ the King. Our current ministry of word and sacrament, law and gospel, preaching and mission work, charity work, cleaning and building, take limp hands, nothing would get done in Christendom. And in his, his second coming, and he raises us from the grave, he wants us to embrace them like those, those little girls Seth and I saw running up to their papa, mama, when they come home from work. 
Do not lick your hands. Hang limp. Um, and he said that fear really is the cause of this, of limp hands. Let us not be afraid. And let us not be afraid of Advent, but of God's coming to us, of, of Jesus coming to us. Let us not cower at his coming. Let's not give a bah humbug for Christmas or kind of an, an apathetic uh, attempt at ministry next year in our church. Let us never remain in sin at his second coming. Those three advents. Rather, sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. They created me on page seven. <laughs> that is offered here and then also no limp hands when it comes to the offering plate uh, please give generously they're static and located in the entryway of the church you may be seated <laughs> <laughs> 